Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you the amazing, powerful beauty of the 10 second to the Elliott wave. So today on DAX, first we saw it open here, kind of going up and down, and then it started going down during the London session, and it completed a wave down. In my earlier video, I have talked about this, and then it started doing another journey up. It went and it, and it did a three up, in a four down followed by a five up so i'm going to go to the m1 chart now and show you how beautifully it did all of that so let's go to the m1 chart we're going to start from the london open using the 10 second elliott wave concept so we have the peak here and then almost cross of zero line right and then this divergence that's your completed wave down we can we can mark this very very easily like so so let's suppose we can mark that as wave one it really doesn't matter where you do wave one and two but you want to get the three right which is in line with the peak and then that becomes your four and this becomes your five now how did i confirm that i can confirm that by actually going down into the individual impulse waves and then confirm inside it what was going on. So I'm going to mark it just so that we, you know what I'm talking about. Let's find out the internal structure of this wave three down. So I'm going to mark it, shade it, and then we need to break this chart into uh, different candles. So if I go to the 15 second chart, uh, let's count this so this is like how many bars is it this is about 30 bars so if i go to the 15 second chart it would turn into 120 bars and that's the perfect number we want we want the if when you are checking a wave you you need minimum of 100 bars or periods or right to a maximum of 140 so if you go there 15 second chart let's find it here we go. Now, there you go. So this is the internal structure of that wave three down. Now it's not perfect because it shows that the, probably what we thought was a three, you know, what we thought was a five actually, it's actually a three here, right? But we can see the structure here and I can count it. Sometimes it's really perfect. In this occasion, it's kind of like three, four and five, right? And then it goes this way. And what we marked as wave four internally also is showing some sort of an ABC, right? A zigzag up. And then that was followed by a five down. So if you look at the structure of the wave five down, so in wave five is also an impulse wave and it will have its own one, two, three, four, five count, right? If you want, I can mark that for you as well. So because this is where wave four ended, this will be our wave one. That would be a two. This would be a three because there's a peak of AO here. And then that would be a four. And look at that setup one. And this is our five. And that's how we confirmed that this wave was a completed wave, right? Let's go down again. Here we go. So within this three down, which was the three down. Now, an important thing here is that once people see a, a wave three, uh, we assume that there will always be a wave four. That's not really the case. There will be a, an impulse wave, and inside an impulse wave, you'll have a sequence of three, four, fives, and all of that. And it could do another four sideways. And when the four happens, then you can expect a further wave five down. But in this case, as soon as the price went on the other side of the purple, this count, the way it was, it was a three down. Let it be a three down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to have. It doesn't have to do a four and a five. But this itself was a completed wave. After that, a reversal would start. So if the market went sideways and did not go impulsive like that, we would expect it to possibly do a five down. In this case, however, the market turned around and did an impulse wave up. And now that it's above purple, we were actually long here. So if you look at my previous video, um, today's video earlier, um, this is where we went long. And then by this time, you have a new three. So because, because this is the peak of AO, you have a new three up there, and then it comes 
down creates this uh, cross, fresh cross of zero line, the red, red bars, and you have a tight box and a sleeping gaiter creating a perfect setup one. We went long here. This was your add-on. This was your add-on. Beautiful trade taken again. And that's your three, four, and a five. So now I can go there again and do another count, right? I can, I can consider this as one, two, or I can consider that as one, two, but I'll stick with this. Then I'll mar mark that as my three. This peak down because that's in line with the cross of zero line. I'll count that as wave four, and then that will be my wave five. But if you pay more attention now, watch this. Now, because this is the highest peak, I can now move this to as a completed wave. So at that time, it was a one, two, three, four, five completed wave, right? But when price went down and it did a new wave, now, if you watch M5, I'm going to go to the M5 chart, you would see that this was one extraordinarily beautiful peak here on the AO. So that became the new three. This became the four here. So on the M5, you had a setup one now and setup one broke out here. Now inside this, so this was a three up that became a four up. So what is this now? This is five. And where would the five wave terminate? And that's the beauty that you can always apply. So term, it would terminate at target zone one, right? There we go. I draw my favorite expansion and it breaks there. So when I was, when the market was here, which is New York Open, let me mark that. And I looked at the M1 chart around this time here. I saw a perfect setup one. So a perfect setup one right at New York Open you can easily go long there, buy order there, stop loss here. Where is it going to go? Now, here you can apply its own target zone. And this is where confluence will come as well. So you have one target zone one from this chart here. And let me color it differently. Right. I love doing this. This is so beautiful. Um, okay, let's change the color of target zone one to Expansion, visibility, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where's the color? I'm going to change this to yellow. Right, there we go. So you'll see two target zone ones now on this chart. The black one is the one that I have drawn on the five minute chart. Right? So that's there. And then the yellow one is the one that I am drawing based on the internal structure of the wave five. So on this M5 wave, right? Let me slow down. On this M5 chart, you see a three up, four down, and then you see a five up, but the five up possibly has not concluded because wave five should touch target zone one, which is allowing me to actually trade the five of this five. Yeah. So if this wave goes up, and creates a five, this would be a five of the whole sequence. So now I have two target zone ones, giving me amazingly strong odds. But the market is not always going to move smoothly the way you like it. So we have trade management and risk management for that. So we took the trade, went up, we took our profits there, we turned around, but the wave is not complete yet, so you're still confident that something's about to happen. So if you look at this, this is the New York open price, and this is the low of the first candle, and that's exactly where it bounced, and it started to go up again. And guess where it hit? Just check that. Let me just go to the current time frame. Just, just, just look at it. So over here, you had predicted, not with a 100% guarantee, but you had an idea that if it were to go up, it's most probably going to go to the target zone one. And that is why it's one of our motto, keep working towards target zone one. If you can plot target zone one like this, if you could count Elliott Wave using the simple concept like that, 
and having the fractal geometric mindset in your brain. It's so much fun trading this, so much fun. So that's the quick 10 second Elliott wave and the beautiful, beautiful wave-wise and most spectacular day on DAX 30.